here for you. Fox 4 News starts now. Hello, I'm Dan Godwin with a look at what's making news in North Texas. A man may have survived a double shooting in Frisco last week, thanks in part to the other victim distracting the shooter. The family of 20-year-old Zachary Lowe says he was shot twice in the back while running away from the shooter. We are told Lowe often walked home from work near the Walmart at Preston Road and Hickory Street. The Army veteran's father says the shooter asked his son for a cigarette there last Wednesday, then pulled a gun and demanded his wallet. And that is when the second victim, Yong Yoan, passed by, Lo ran, and both men were shot. Lo survived. Yoan did not. He, he was walking by just innocently and, and stuff like that. And uh, it alerted uh, or it caught the assailant's attention. And when Zachary saw that, he saw that as an opportunity to run. I'm very thankful. Uh, he saved my son's life. Lowe's family says he's getting better, but likely faces a long recovery. Frisco police have not made any arrests and have not said if they've identified a suspect. American Airlines flight attendants are one step closer to going on strike. The Association of Professional Flight Attendants sent a letter to the National Mediation Board asking for permission to walk off the job. Flight attendants are asking for a 35% pay raise along with bigger retirement fund contributions. The union and the Fort Worth-based carrier failed to agree on a new contract by last Friday's deadline. Workers have not seen raises since 2019. We came to negotiate last week. The company did not. And so we are done. Time's up. We have waited long enough. We're not going to wait any longer. And so we've taken this important step. A strike can't happen unless federal mediators sign off on it. After that, flight attendants must wait 30 days before actually walking off the job. American Airlines is assuring travelers that even if a strike does happen, it won't be during the holidays. Well, cases of the dangerous respiratory virus, RSV, are spiking among children in North Texas. Children's Health says it has nearly 550 RSV cases in its system. That's up nearly 340 percent from the beginning of October and the most Children's Health has ever seen. Two weeks ago, the case count was about 380. Experts say most RSV cases among kids are not severe, but some do require hospitalization. RSV can lead to other serious problems like pneumonia in infants and small children. The federal government is giving out more free COVID-19 test kits ahead of an expected increase in cases during the holidays. If you ordered a set of four, the last time test kits were offered up in September, you can get four more. People who didn't order any from the last batch can get up to eight at-home tests. We have a link to order the kits online. You can also receive them by calling the number on your screen, 800-232-0233. Volunteers today prepared turkeys for people looking to build a more positive future at a place called Dallas Life. This is a tradition that's been going on here for the past eight years, frying turkeys ahead of Thanksgiving Day. The goal is to serve about 300 people who live at that facility. Dallas Life houses men and women who are in their 10-month drug and alcohol recovery program. They will also serve former participants in the program who are returning to celebrate the holiday. It turns out the idea for this effort was borrowed from a country singer a few states away. The turkey fry actually started in Nashville, Tennessee, under the direction of country western singer Tracy Lawrence. We met him at a national convention. He was interested in us, and we wanted to start this here in Dallas. Once the turkeys are done, the volunteers will work on all the trimmings and desserts, all of it, so it'll be ready in time for the holiday.
The Dallas Stars have announced they will immortalize Hall of Famer Mike Madonna. The team will unveil a statue of Madonna outside the American Airlines Center next year. The franchise's all-time leading scorer was there for the announcement made during last night's Stars Rangers matchup. The now 53-year-old Madonna shared his thoughts about the honor. It's like getting a call about a jersey or the Hall of Fame. I mean, it's just, you know, one of those calls you, you, you never expect uh, you're going to get when you go play the game. The statue was sculpted by the same artist who did Dirk Nowitzki's statue. The official unveiling will take place March 16th. Former Texas Rangers great Adrian Beltre tops the list of newcomers to the Baseball Hall of Fame ballot. Beltre is in his first year of eligibility. Now he's one of just 33 major league players to reach 3,000 hits during his career. He also had 477 home runs and won five gold gloves at third base. Beltre played his final eight seasons in Texas. Voting ends New Year's Eve. The 2024 Baseball Hall of Fame class will be announced January 23rd. And coming up on Fox 4 News, see how a company is using technology to help some kids with disabilities take their first steps. And a mild stretch as we approach Thanksgiving. All of that coming up. New technology allows children who have never been able to walk before the opportunity to do just that. And the benefits go beyond the physical. Fox 4's Lori Brown with the story. Dude, look at you. Kristen Gibson's son Beckett is five years old. He was born with cerebral palsy, so seeing this is a moment she will never forget. I was getting teary eyed because it's just, it's a first, it's a first, and not something that I expected to see anytime soon. So it's really special. How do your legs feel? What do they feel like? They feel good. You did great, buddy. Rachel Grodin's son Ian is nine years old with a rare genetic condition. He was at one point ambulatory and through many health struggles lost that ability. To, so to see him walking and being able to walk multiple steps I haven't seen since he was probably six years old and it was just my heart is full. Moments like these are what Mamit Magoo has dedicated his life to. He is the founder and CEO of Trexo Robotics. A few years ago, I found out that my nephew, Pranit, was diagnosed with cerebral palsy, and we learned that he would never be able to walk. The thought of my nephew never taking his first steps inspired us to find a solution. The solution, robotic legs. And provide them with the powered assistance for walking. Uh, so you have a powered hip joint, a powered knee joint, and a passive ankle. And while the milestone of walking is important psychologically, it also provides important physical benefits, even with the help of a robot. They say sitting eight hours at your desk is as bad as smoking a pack of cigarettes. What we're simply trying to do is bring back this core component of human health, which is walking. And once you start to do that, you start to see so many improvements and benefits. Since the company's launch in 2019, there are now 350 children using the devices. All of our Trexo users have completed 60 million steps, which is enough to walk around the earth three times. It was amazing. This is the first time Luke has ever walked. And without one of these devices, probably the loss. Arlene Crisman's son Luke is two years old with the terminal illness male rat syndrome. He's given two to four years to live. Muscle tone issues, so his muscles getting stiffer. Something like this would help to prevent that from happening. Increase mobility, um, increase movement. Magoo says insurance companies are beginning the process of funding them on a case-by-case -case basis as clinical studies about the benefits are underway but for many. The plan is to start fundraising, a process to take one step at a time. In Plano, Lori Brown, Fox 4 News. Well, taking a look around Texas for Thanksgiving Day, weather looking fairly seasonable, right around 60 here at DFW and widespread lower to mid 60s across the state with lots of sun north. Though along the Gulf Coast, there may be uh, some clouds and perhaps even an isolated shower. But here at DFW, not a lot to complain about over the next few days. Lots of sun for your Wednesday. 
High temperatures, a little on the cooler side, though, upper 50s. That's after a cold start in the morning, too. We're going to be waking up to 30s over the next few mornings. Thanksgiving Day, very similar. I think we'll be in the upper 30s to start off the day, right back to around 60. There could be some clouds off to the south, but otherwise dry. And then for your Black Friday, upper 60s once again. Um, lots of sun uh, after a chilly start in the morning. So taking a look around the country right now, Looking more and more like November, right? 53 right now here in the Dallas Fort Worth area and widespread 40s and 30s elsewhere. You can see Minneapolis 38, Kansas City 45, 39 in Chicago, and even New York City in the 40s at the moment. The only spot that's warm down in Florida. So if you're trying to escape that, go down to South Florida. But for today, upper 50s here in the Metroplex. Mixture of sun and clouds. I think we'll see more sun as we head into the second half of the day. But the thing we're going to be dealing with today is going to be those winds. In fact, winds gusting above 25 to 35 miles per hour as we head into the afternoon. To take a look at that future cast, those clouds gradually getting out of here as we head towards the evening hours. So our weather will continue improving as we head throughout the rest of the day. As far as rain chances go, not a lot to see here over the next several days. I think we'll be dry Friday and into Saturday. Maybe a couple of showers trying to move in by Saturday evening. But right now, the only chance of rain over the next week looks to be heading into your uh, Sunday morning. Could be a chilly rain, by the way. But you can see over the next 10 days, I put the European out a week and a half. Not a lot of rain expected here across North Texas. Perhaps a quarter of an inch at most could use a little bit more than that. But otherwise, we're going to be dealing with the chill over the next few days. You can see those lows in the upper 30s for your Wednesday and your Thanksgiving morning as well, and even through the weekend, staying in the 40s. High temperatures below average as well, upper 50s to around 60, or average high, 65 degrees at the moment. All right, so taking a look up in Canada, cold air loading up, zero degrees there in the rink and inlet. I do expect some of this to spill down as we head into the longer range. You can see below average temperatures for pretty much the entire United States. So here's that seven day forecast. Windy today, heading into your Wednesday. Lots of sun. Should be nice, even though it's going to be in the upper 50s. But we're going to be chilly in the morning through at least midweek. Thanksgiving day looking great, 60 degrees. Mixture of sun and clouds. Pretty much the same for your Black Friday as well. Heading into the weekend, though, clouds do increase. And we are going to be watching for some rain chances, mainly on Sunday morning. All right, thanks, Dylan. And that's a look at what's making news in North Texas. Of course, for news anytime, go to fox4news.com. Bye-bye.